Hi there, my name is Molly and I'm here with my Baby Lock Triumph and I'm going to show you a really cool technique that you can do using your bias binder attachment for your Baby Lock Triumph or your Baby Lock Ovation. Um, so let's head over to the machine and we'll talk about the settings and the application. Alrighty, so here I am uh, with my Baby Lock Triumph. And I have my machine set up for a cover stitch narrow to the right, which means I'm threaded in my C2 and C3 needles, as well as my chain looper, okay? So we'll go ahead and open up our doors here. And the first thing I'm going to need to do is replace my knife cover with my sewing table. And that is going to allow us to attach our um, bias binder. The next thing I'm going to need to do is lower my upper looper as well as lock my blade. Okay, because you don't want your fabric to be cut when you're attaching bias or a binding. So, Next, I'm just going to simply turn my hand wheel towards me to go ahead and lock that looper and that um, knife so that they are positioned down. Now, I'm just going to follow the guide and I have already pre-cut my strips to the corresponding width. So the bias binder I'm using today is the 15 millimeter. So therefore I have cut my strips to be 48 millimeters wide and they can be however long you'd like. And then I also have here the fabric that I'm going to be attaching my bias to. So to attach our bias binder, I'm gonna go ahead and raise my presser foot and I'm going to close my sewing arm and my door and I'm going to get out our bias binder. So this is what the contraption looks like. It's kind of funky looking. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to extend this zigzag arm all the way out and next, we're just going to place it on our machine, lining it up with the two front screw holes on our sewing arm. We will need our attachment screws, okay? And we're just going to screw in our attachment. Now you want to be aware, left to right, where you should place your bias binder, okay? So for, I've already tested mine a couple of times, so I know that I need to scooch it a little bit more to the left than I might think. Alrighty, so once it's all tightened down, we can start feeding our fabric through, okay? So once again, I'm set up for a cover stitch narrow. However, this particular um, technique can be used with a cover stitch, a chain stitch, um, a wide cover stitch, or even a triple cover stitch. So you can pick your favorite. I'm using the narrow today. And we're gonna get out our fabric strips, okay? So I've cut my fabric on the bias here. And I cut one corner to be kind of angled, which makes feeding it through the attachment a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my zigzag attachment. And I am going to weave it, weave my fabric through the guides. Just like that. Next, we're going to take it to this little funnel and we're gonna feed the end through. And this is where I like to grab a pair of tweezers. 
So I'll grab my tweezers and I'll pull using that little slit in the guide. And we'll just continue moving our fabric all the way down through the attachment. So I'll go through the next guide. Now once you've gotten all the way to the end here, you're going to see two fingers on the top and on the bottom of our attachment. So I'm going to guide the tip of my fabric through those fingers, and once again, I use my tweezers to kind of help, making sure my fabric on the other side is nice and straight. We'll go ahead and give it a pull all the way underneath our presser foot. So at this point, you should be able to see the fold of that fabric on the top and on the bottom, okay? Because that is going to be how our double fold happens. So we wanna be able to see both of those. Once that's all set, I like to go ahead and start my um, binding before I put any fabric or project in it. We'll go ahead and straighten this back out and we'll watch this as we sew because we don't want it to twist or catch on these guides. Once that's all set, we're good to just start sewing. And you want to go pretty slow. So you want to stop every couple inches, make sure your folds are remaining. You want to make sure everything looks and goes as smooth as possible. Alrighty, so once I have my kind of little chain started, I'm going to grab whatever project piece I want to attach to my bias binder and we'll lift our presser foot back up and I'm going to shimmy this right into that little fold where those two pieces are meeting. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you just want it to just catch under that presser foot kind of at an angle. The edge will grab it and it'll attach as we sew. So now we can go ahead and lower our presser foot and continue. So we see my end is getting twisted here. So I can go ahead and pause for a second and make sure that I untwist this because we don't want this running through our machine. Alrighty. And once we have stitched that through, we have our nice stretchy bias attached to our project, okay? So there's my knit bias along the edge and then my stretchy knit fabric as the main fabric. And our back is nice and consistent. We see all those little loops on the back that make that narrow cover stitch. So that is how you use your bias binder attachment for your Baby Lock Triumph or your Baby Lock Ovation. Now, um, a couple troubleshooting tips. If you notice that your fabric is shifting to the right as you sew, feel free to pause and lift up your presser foot so that way you can manipulate that fabric back on track. 
The other thing you can try is scooching your bias binder attachment a little bit more to the left. I always tell people it's a little bit more uh, further to the left than you think it is, okay? Um, and as long as you follow these tips and tricks, you should have wonderful bias binding on your knit or your woven projects in no time. So that is how you use the knit woven bias binder attachment for your baby lock triumph or your baby lock ovation. This is a wonderful technique that every sewer can apply to their craft or their projects. It is sold in 8, 10, and 15 millimeter sizes, and it is sold singular or in the Triumph 29 foot kit. I hope you enjoyed this video today, and we'll see you next time.